Hey, what, um, did you know Bill Monday then very well? No. Okay. No, I did not. Uh, we moved in different circles. I met him. I don't think I, we never hung out together. Because he played in those same, play, oh, he played like at the Notch Up, huh? He was playing like in the fancy restaurants, I think. Not so much like the Brass Knocker. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, I can't remember the name of the place, but he played it someplace there a lot in Saratoga. The yeah. Plumed Horse. The Plumed Horse. Does that ring a bell at all? So it might have been later. It might have been then after you were gone that he was. He was Is that like the muzzled hound? <laughs> you know, it's. You know what? I think it was the first place in Saratoga. <laughs> the bloated roach. Yeah. I, mean, it could be. I think it was the first place in Saratoga that started that had valet parking. Started about fifteen or twenty years ago because oh. you couldn't park in Saratoga when, when in oh. the nineties when when Saratoga and Las Gatas got really trendy. It was, you know, people would come from all over the place to go out there for dinner and spend a yeah. hundred bucks a head and things like that. You know. But that was the later plume course. Uh, Bill had left um, uh, long, long before I'd gone to Texas. So Bill was my first teacher. That was that, okay. was, that was why. I'm, That's right. I'm, you said that. Yeah, and it was um, it was before Al had, was like teaching with him or something. And Bill was. Um, uh, I think my mom and I walked into a music store and I saw a banjo in the window and, and I said uh, I said hey I want to learn how to play that. I think I told her we I think we went down there looking for music lessons, but then I saw the banjo and and I, and I said uh, you know what I want to learn how to play that. And so they, we came in and they sent us to go talk to the guitar teacher. The guitar teacher Bill Monday said, well if you want to learn the banjo you should really learn the guitar first, partly because he probably needed more students than the banjo teacher. Did. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know? that seems right to me. <laughs> but, it's like um, a trom I want to play the trombone. You should go go there from the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guitar. I'll teach you the guitar, and you'll be able to translate it to the trombone. <laughs> right. any, but the trombone doesn't make sense without the guitar. Yeah, the guitar. Right. You know, um, but you know what? I, I found out later. By the time I was in high school, I had a friend who who was a banjo player. I could yeah. pick up his banjo and, and play just about everything he was doing. So he actually he didn't really steer me wrong, mm -hmm. but um, but you know, because the guitar is a much more versatile instrument and things like that. You know, but uh, so it was. But it but it is kind of a funny little part of the story. What is it about the guitar anyway? There is something primally romantic. It's filled with possibilities in a way that almost no other instrument is. What is it? Interesting point, because you know, a lot of the stuff I've been playing lately and practicing, I used to play a lot of classical guitar and I played yeah. lutes, I played Renaissance and Baroque music and all that kind of stuff. And lately I've been being drawn to stuff I used to play a lot more and some of it is, I mean, a, a long, long time ago. And some of it is that you can go from things like like this. Kicking ragtime blues to, you know, tear jerking violin, gypsy violin kind of sound mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so I think it's just got so many, so many colors and flavors. You know, I think more than anything else. And you can go from, you know, and then you've got Hendrix and Van Halen. Yeah, you can take it to the beach. You know, a lot easier to haul around than your piano. So, um, and you can you can be a great communicator. You can be Bob Dylan. You don't have to be a very good guitar player. You know, I mean, Dylan didn't need to play guitar any better than he ever did. I mean, he's not a bad guitar player, but he's not a clean guitar player. Who cares? He'll play the same song with six different chord progressions because what he wants to do is tell me the story. He'll even mess up all the chords as, as the song goes on, and who even cares? You know? So his, his use of it is completely different than most people's, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a you ever think about how objects get infused with pictures, with memories? It's like when I look at the guitar, I s when I look at a guitar, you know, you look at it, you can see Billy Dean in there, you can see Bobby Raitt in there, you can see Robert Johnson in there. It's not just a piece of wood, you know, or a yeah. collection of pieces of wood. You can see whole stories and freight yeah. trains and highways and roads and migrant farmers and all kinds of stuff in there. And you know, when I play different things, I mean, I feel connected to the person that it came from or something. Whether it's Reverend Gary Davis or, or stuff I got from Yorma or stuff, you know, um, everything else. I feel like, a, you know, they sort of 
channeling those guys. It's kind of a, a sort of spiritual thing sometimes. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it really is.